everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm Jeff Zwerink, and I'm joined in the studio by good friend and colleague Ken Wolgamuth. He is a geologist who's been working in the area of petroleum geology for more than three decades and is also the founder of Solid Rock Lectures. And today we are going to address a pretty important issue, uh, one that's been used to object to the idea that the Earth is very old, and that's the idea of finding carbon-14 in diamonds. Ken, it's good to have you here today. It's really good to be here. Thank you. So, uh, again, in, in the church, there's this discussion debate about how old the Earth is. And one of the arguments I've heard that we can't trust the dating techniques that the Earth isn't as old as uh, a lot of the conventional scientists would say is that when we use radioisotope dating, particularly radiocarbon dating, we actually find radiocarbon in diamonds. And that means that the technique's not valid. So can you kind of lay out why, why would people use that to say the technique's not valid and how do we respond to that? Yeah. Well, first, a little bit about the nature of when radiocarbon can be used. Okay. It's established by tree rings that basically take a time record of radiocarbon back to 14,000 years. And then there are records of the sedimentary varves in Lake Siogetsu in Japan that take that carbon-14 record back to about 50,000 years. So, so we could date something that's about 50,000 years old kind of on the extreme end. That's mm -hmm. kind of on the extreme end because by the time samples have had their radiocarbon decaying away to about close to 35,000 years, the amount of carbon from the initial 100% is down to about 1%. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's just getting harder to measure. It's getting harder and harder to measure, and the uncertainty is getting greater and greater right, right, and greater. Right. So, okay, so that kind of outlines the problem then. You know, radiocarbon works back to maybe 50,000, 35 to 50,000 years. We're looking at diamonds, which are presumably formed hundreds of millions, if not billions of years ago. Why would they have any radiocarbon in them in the first place? Yeah. Uh, here I need to step to the context of how the analysis is done in the laboratory and a little bit about the processing. The first point to make is that the equipment that is used is referred to as an accelerator mass spectrometer. Okay. So it is very sensitive to measuring the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12. Okay. Does that very, very well. And that's, the, that's what we're using to, to get the, the data. Yeah. Okay. That's the physical measurement to check the amount of carbon-14 that's left. Right. Now, to get a, the best sensitivity of the equipment itself, geologists have gotten a sample, samples of graphite. Now, graphite is pure carbon. Right. It's not combined with anything else. It's pure carbon. They put it into the AMS equipment, and they can measure that ratio to about 0.003 percent modern carbon. So that's a very, very, very small amount, very, yes. very low levels. At about that level, the equipment and the electronics of the equipment te cannot tell the difference between a carbon-14 atom right, okay. versus a, a electronic uh, flux in the detectors. Okay. So it's that, that's kind of the, the lowest possible limit we have. All right. All right. Any other kind of sample, coal, wood, bone, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, whatever else has carbon in it, it has that carbon-14, but it must be processed to convert whatever material it is into graphite. Okay. The conversion process is done in the laboratory. They are processing the samples with aggressive chemicals mm -hmm. to remove the risk of contamination. So if microbes gotten into the bones or something like that, uh, that uh, it's hoped to remove those. Plus, Again, so we're looking at such small levels here, you got to get all the contamination gone. Have to try okay, to do gotcha, the very okay. best we can get contamination right. out. So when that whole process is done, uh, when that same graphite is processed through all the chemical processes rather than putting it through the equipment directly mm -hmm. without processing because it is graphite, we get a result of the percentage radiocarbon of 0.3 to 0.4 percent modern carbon. Now I want to contrast. The first number I said before was 0.003. Right. Okay. Now I'm talking about 0.3. So 100, 100 times, 100 times, more. times okay. more. Right. So 
the process in the laboratory is basically, at that low, low level, basically adding a hundred times more of the, than the background of the equipment. So, so it's always there with a processed sample and must be subtracted out. So, so the key point there is, so take something that's supposedly got no radiocarbon in it. Yeah. The processing will put in some amount of carbon in it that will give a signature of some sort of age, whether there was any there to begin with that or not. That is correct. So okay. typically the laboratories, they, on a regular basis, weekly, they're always checking this background mm -hmm. level and the processing sequence. We have carbon dioxide here in the, here in the studio. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It's in our bodies. Carbon-14 is everywhere in all the labs. Cannot be avoided because it's part of carbon dioxide. So we okay. inevitably need to treat this material as being basically comes from the processing sequence and needs to be subtracted out by the laboratories, mm -hmm. which they do. So, so kind of bringing that back to the carbon-14 and the diamonds, when they're doing this with the diamonds, what sort of levels were they getting out and how does it compare to this uh, sample preparation yeah. where you end up with 0.3%? Well, I've heard it said as it's 100 times more and that's just what I described mm -hmm. from the chemicals. Uh, I've seen a number that says it's 60,000 years, Okay. whereas I would for the expect, you mean the, yeah, for the measurement in diamonds, yeah. okay. I would expect that the laboratory probably would have said this is older than 60,000 years. Okay. But I, uh, that's the type of question that it's important to really go to the laboratory people themselves and just ask what's the status of this and what, what do you think as an expert that is, who is living your life in the radiocarbon community all the time measuring these mm -hmm. and running these AMS equipment.